Well, come on, let's give Jesus one more big hand clap on this Thanksgiving weekend. Come on, let's really give him a hand clap of thanks. How many of y'all think he's worthy of all the glory, all the honor, all the praise? Lord, there is none like you. We come back and we say thanks. Father, I pray right now that the attitude of gratitude that it flow in this house. Lord, we're not going to focus on what we don't have or what didn't happen or what didn't go our way, but we're going to thank you for our blessings. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Come on, y'all, to just say thank you to him right there. Thank you, thank you. Father, I pray you'd open our heart, open our eyes, open our understanding. Show us how much you've given to us and how much more you want to give. How much you've given and how much more you want to give to all of us, my brothers and my sisters. Lord, I thank you and I bless these people in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, give all of our campuses with us online a big hand clap. What's up? Dumas, Texas. Owensboro, Henderson, we love you guys. It's good to see you. Just turn to your neighbor and tell them I'm thankful you got to sit by me. Just tell them that this morning. I'm thankful you got to sit by me. And uh, I, I really believe that, that the attitude of gratitude opens up doors to go forward in life. And so I think we ought to choose to be thankful regardless of what's going on around us. How, how many of y'all did you have a good Thanksgiving meal? How many of y'all are thankful even for your weird family that you got to hang out with on Thursday, right? The odd cousin. And if you don't know who the odd cousin is, it might be you, right? That's, a, that's the rules. It might, it might be you. And so... Uh, uh, the church is like that. I'm, I'm thankful for everybody, and I'm thankful to be with you, and I'm thankful that we don't just break bread like we did on Thursday, but we get to break the bread of life together. So why don't we open up the bread of life? Let's go. Let's open up our Bible. How many of y'all believe that this book is the word of the living God? We believe that around here. Amen? Open it up to the gospel of St. Luke. Let's go to the gospel of St. Luke. Now, I want to show you the, the story of 10 guys and their thankfulness. The story of 10 guys and their thankfulness. And we'll go to the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 17. We'll start reading in about verse 11. And I'll tell you, I believe whenever you're thankful, it makes God want to do more on your behalf. Whenever you're thankful, it makes God want to do more on your behalf. I, I was thinking about a few years ago, um, I don't know, maybe it's almost five years ago now, I had to, I had to have my nose reconstructed. And so when, when I would preach or, or when I would do things, my nose got weak. It was like a weak nasal bulb is what they called it. And when I was breathing in, it would just collapse like a weak hose. So I couldn't breathe through my nose. So I would be preaching and not getting enough air. And that's whenever I said crazy stuff, it was a lack of oxygen. I promise people. Y'all please forgive. It was a lack of oxygen. Uh, medical professionals would always come and be like, hey, your, your lips are turning purple. And so finally they said, you're going to have to have your nose fixed so you can breathe. Uh, when, when I was sleeping, you know, it's like listening to a, a uh, grizzly bear eat a warthog at night for Jesse. And so I went to what was supposed to be one of the top 10 surgeons in America. And, and he looks at my nose and says, well, the first thing he says is, what do you want your nose to look like? And I'm like, I want it to look like this. He's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? This is, I know it's not beautiful, but it's my nose, right? I had this great big, great big beak, and I miss my big beak. He said, listen, the reason you, you can't breathe, your nose is so flat, we got to fix it. And so they fixed my nose up where I could breathe, and that launched my plus-size modeling career, and, and all of this I got going on right now. But when the guy, the guy fixed my nose, he laid on my shoulder. I was under anesthetic for eight hours. And I woke up without the use of my right arm for six months as it crushed the nerves on the inside of my shoulder. And just to get a spoon to my mouth, I would grab it with my right hand and lift it with my left hand to eat. So it was a very difficult time in life. But before I, I went down there, I uh, took my little boy right before we had the surgery, the girls as well, and we went to a place that I believe is like purgatory for parents. It's called the Great Wolf Lodge, right? It's, it's like purgatory for parents, and they have water slides and that kind of stuff for the kids inside, and you just kind of, you, you live through it, right? You survive it. It's like a theme park or something, and, and after we go, my, my little boy was into dragons at the time. We went and we bought him this plastic dragon. And so we've been to the Great Wolf Lodge. He's got this plastic dragon. We're falling asleep at night in the bed. And he's a little guy. He's probably six, five, six years old, something like that. And he's going in and out. And I look over and he's got the biggest grin on his face. He's grinning from ear to ear. And he's kind of giggling as he's falling asleep. 
And I say, hey, hey, brother, what's up, man? What are you smiling? What are you laughing about? He said, I'm so happy. I said, I said why are you so happy? He said, because I got to come to Dallas. Now I went to the Great Wolf Lodge, and I got this dragon. And he said, I'm thankful. Now I'm telling you, my heart as a parent just melted. Now I'm like, let's buy the boy 100 more dragons right here, 100 dragons for this boy, right? Come on, why did I want to do more for him? Because he was thankful. How many of you have ever had the opposite experience as parents? The more you do, the more they expect it, and the angrier you gotten. How many parents have ever threatened? I'm like, if you don't get thankful for what you have, I'm going to take the fun fairies out in the backyard, and I'm going to execute the fun fairies. There will be no more fun in this house till someone's thankful, and only I have the power to resurrect the fun fairies. Amen? See, I, I believe as imperfect parents, we want to bless them when they're thankful, but the brakes come on when that attitude of gratitude is lacking. I think the Father in heaven in a more perfect way than we'll ever understand has a similar principle. Come on, whenever we're thankful, there's a completion that starts in what God has already started. Luke chapter 17 shows us that. Let's check it out. Luke 17, verse 11, it says this. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourself to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God, fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, were there not 10 cleansed, but where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Here's what we have. We have Jesus on his way to Jerusalem. And if you look, anything you find in the Bible, anything written in the scripture, it's not there by accident. It's there by purpose. It says that whenever Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, that he passed through the, the region of Samaria, through the midst of Samaria. Now, I want you to know this. No Orthodox Jew, no self-respecting rabbi, no person that followed the Torah during the days of Jesus. They would not pass through the land of Samaria. As a matter of fact, they tried to find a different route. They had a different route that they went way out of their way, simply not to be in a Samaritan territory. Why would you do that? Why would you put extra travel time? How many know if you're looking at map, no, I'm dating myself when I say map quest, but what about like uh, Apple Maps or Google Maps? How many are always, you're never going to take the longer route. Can I get an amen? You're taking the fastest route to get from point A to point B, and you're going to find a way to shave time off of a trip. It's like nobody's going to the bathroom until Jesus comes back. We are going home, baby. I found the shortest route, right? That's what dads do. So these guys took a longer route. Why would they not pass through Samaria? They wouldn't pass through Samaria because they believed everything about the Samaritans and their culture was defiled and broken. See, the Samaritans, they, they, they kind of went away from the people of God. They set up their own temple system other than where the real temple was supposed to be in Jerusalem, up north in northern Israel. Then they began to take other religions and mix them with the re religion of Israel. So to the Jews during the day of Jesus, the Samaritans were one of the most filthy, wicked cultures. So close, but yet so far. To be close to them, you would be unclean. That's why Jesus told the parable of the Good Samaritan. Today we hear Good Samaritan, we think, of course, Good Samaritan. Back then they did not believe there could be such a thing as a Good Samaritan. Every Samaritan was bad. But Jesus isn't afraid to pass through Samaria. How many of y'all are thankful that our Jesus is not afraid to pass through the darkness, to pass through the sin, to pass through a broken culture? Come on, to pass into our life whenever we were all messed up. At every campus, you ought to give God a hand clap that he passed through the Samaria of your life and redeemed us. Amen? Come on, come on. He's not afraid of that. He's passing through Samaria. And he gets to a certain place. By the way, Jesus is still not afraid of the dark. 
People ask me all the time, why do, why do you go into the places you preach? Why would you, why'd you preach in shop? Why would you preach in riots? Why, why would you preach uh, up in D.C. in those places? I'm going to go where the hurting, broken people are, where the chaos and where the trouble and trauma is. Because whenever I show up and Jesus shows up, peace shows up. And if more pastors and preachers and Christians would do it, we'd see revival in America. Can I get an amen out there? He, he's passing through. And all of a sudden, there, there are 10 men, the Bible says. If you look, look, he entered a certain village, verse 12, there met him 10 men who were lepers, who stood afar off. These 10 lepers show up. They hear that Jesus is there. Now, I want you to understand leprosy during the days of, of Jesus. What would happen if you were a Jew, and let's say maybe you got a little skin tag, you got a little mole, how many of you ever had something like that you went to work on yourself? You got the clippers out or the floss out. You're like, I'm taking care of business here. I'm opening up my own medical practice in my bathroom. And, but, but you start working on that thing. So these guys got a little place on them somewhere. They're picking at it. They're messing with it. But then the thing starts changing colors. And it doesn't go backwards. It goes forward. And what they had to do in their culture, who you had to show your spot to, was one of the priests. The priest would look at your spot. What an awkward position to be in as a pastor. What if I had to inspect all of your skin tags and moles and make sure? I don't want that job. That's all I got to say. I, I want to know you and love you, but I don't want to minister to you like that. The priest, think of all the stuff the priest had to do back then. I mean, they had to inspect, they had to inspect uh, skin gross. They had to inspect mold in houses, see if houses had to be torn down. They ran a butcher shop. Up on the Temple Mount, whenever they would slaughter the sacrificial lambs around the Passover. I mean, these guys had prayers. They had, they had services. They did it all. And people want to know, what are you going to do when you go into ministry? You're going to do it all. You better learn, you better learn it all if you're, going to, if you're going to pastor or lead or that kind of thing. Uh, a short of inspecting your skin issues. Can I get an amen out there? So, so they go in and they show it to the priest. The priest has to look at this spot and determine whether it's leprosy or whether it's just something else. So these 10 guys, somewhere, somehow, they show this spot to who oversaw that process under the priests, whoever they had appointed, and they said, no, you've got, you've got leprosy. What did that mean? That meant that every area of this man's life would drastically change. He wouldn't be going home to his family that night. He wouldn't be going back to the temple. He wouldn't be going to any of the synagogues, wouldn't be going back to his business, wouldn't be going back around his children. He's going to go outside of the camp to a leper's camp, and that's where he's going to stay. And this is a quarantine and one that was of high importance. How many know we know a little bit more about that after the last couple of years? Right now, somebody coughs in the room, and everybody's like, what is that? Did you cough? It's like, yeah, man, we live in West Texas. There's dust this high in the air. Of course he coughed. It's not COVID. Calm down. Can I get an amen out there? Everybody, let's walk in faith and not fear, right? Take care of ourselves. Do what makes sense. But, but. I just refuse to live under a spirit of fear. I refuse to be afraid. I refuse to think every little thing that comes my way is going to kill me. Can I get an amen out there? I'm not talking about living reckless, but I'm talking about not living in fear. Come on, let's give God a hand clap if you think God hadn't given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Amen? And so, so these guys are, are living by themselves in a leper colony. There's 10 of them. And somewhere, somehow, they heard that Jesus had come to town. They heard that there was this traveling rabbi that might be the Messiah who has the power to heal, that the blind they see, the deaf they hear, the lame they walk, and the leper is cleansed. And they heard the word of God. And I'll tell you, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right now, as you hear the word of God, I'm telling you, faith is being released into your heart to open the deaf ear, to open the blind eye, for the lame to walk, for your life to be put back together, for your situation to be turned around. The word changes everything. Can I get an amen? Change everything. So these 10 guys, they come, and the Bible says that they, they cry from afar off. They got to cry from afar off because according to the law, if anybody walks towards them, this is what you have to do if you're a leper. You have to cry out unclean, 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 unclean. Can you imagine what that does to you emotionally? Everywhere you go, you have to cry out, you're, you're unclean, your uncleanness. 
You know, the devil has a way of tagging people with certain uh, problems, certain stereotypes, certain sins, or certain things from their past. They start to wear it like a, we a leper would wear that unclean badge everywhere they go. And identities get stuck to people. And here's what I got good news for you is in Jesus, you all have a brand new identity. That old identity is not you anymore. Come on, you're no longer depressed, you're no longer angry, you're no longer sad, can I get an amen? You're no longer addicted, you're no longer impoverished, you're no longer jealous, can I get an amen? Come on, you're no longer twisted, you're no longer perverse, you're no longer uh, morbid or whatever, can I get an amen? We got a brand new tag on us. And instead of unclean, it's child of God. Instead of unclean, it's born again. Instead of unclean, it's bought by the blood of the Lamb. Instead of unclean, it's His. Instead of unholy, it's holy. Instead of unrighteous, it's righteous. You got a brand new identity in Christ. Start to see yourself through that identity. These lepers are crying out unclean, unclean. And then they see Jesus and they call out from afar. They say, they, they, they say these words, literally, they say, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. I'm so thankful that he's a merciful Jesus. How many of y'all ever just, like, you didn't want people to die? You just didn't care if they kept living? Don't act so holy out there. Wasn't that you want them to die, you just didn't care if they kept living? There's two honest people in the room right now. Aren't you thankful that Jesus is more merciful than a human? Huh? Man, the mercy he shows us again and again and again. He's so merciful. They appeal to his mercy. They say, they say Master, have mercy on us. He answers them this. He says, go show yourself to the temple priest. Doesn't come and pray for him. He doesn't come and minister to him. He just tells them to start walking to the temple priest. Why would he say that? The same people that said that they were unclean would have to see clean flesh and have to say they are no longer unclean. They can return back to the camp of Israel. And so whenever he says, go show yourself to the temple priest, nothing has happened in their body yet. Here's how the miracles, here's how miracles really happen. The word will work when you work it. The, the word will work when you work it. I want you to hear me there in Henderson, Kentucky. The word will work when you work it. A lot of people sit back and say, when God touches me, I'll do this. No, God gave you a word. Now you walk on the word. And as you walk on the word, the healing comes the moment you engage the word, right? You start walking on the word and stuff starts happening. You know, maybe, maybe somebody prophesied to you, you're going you're gonna to have a, a new business. You better not just sit back and wait for that to fall in your lap. You better start walking on the word. You better start studying that business. You better start stalking the competition. Can I get an amen? Learn their practices, but make them better. Better. Start walking that way, and then maybe God, God will meet you. God will bless your moving on his word. These ten guys, they walk on the word of God. That's when the stuff happens, I'm telling you. If you'll walk on the word, that's when the healing breaks forth. It's when the blessing comes, when the, when the answer comes. They start walking towards the temple. When they walk towards the temple, all of a sudden the power of God starts cleansing these lepers' skin. I would love to have been there to have seen it. All of a sudden, this leprosy starts, I don't know what it looked like. I don't know how it washed over, but these places start dis disappearing and their skin gets smooth and new. And that leprosy is stopped and that healing Jesus stands up. You know, the healing Jesus that was there 2,000 years ago, he's still in every one of these rooms this morning for where two or more gathered together in his name. There he is in the midst of them. And if he cleansed the lepers then, he can cleanse the lepers now. Come on, if he cleansed the lepers then, he can heal the, the HIV positive now. Can I get an amen? Cleanse the lepers then, he can heal the COVID positive now. Can I get an amen? He's bigger than leprosy. And so, all 10 of them, man, they just, they got healed. That means they're going to get their house back. They're going to get their families back. Think about the implications. They're going to get their community back. They're not going to have to walk around screaming unclean anymore. They're going to get their, 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 their work, their trade back. And so they're, they're so ecstatic about what, what's happened. They're just going to move forward in life. And moving forward in life is what I want for every person in here as a pastor. As a pastor, 
My promised land is seeing you get into your promised land. Seeing you go higher in life. There's nothing that, that, that warms our heart than seeing people go forward. Seeing them, the, the Bible words prosper, but all prosper means is to push forward. How many of y'all want to see your kids and your grandkids push forward in life, right? Want to see them go, go higher than you went, amen? That, that, that's what we want. And so these guys are pushing forward, but one of them stops. The Bible says he turns around. The rest of them keep going to the temple. One of them stops, turns around, comes back towards Jesus, falls on his face, glorifies him, and gives him thanks. One out of ten, while everybody else was getting their life back, their stuff back, all their things, one of them took time. Just one out of ten took time to come back, fall on his face, and glorify God to give him thanks. You know, how many of y'all has God done something in your life, saved you or healed you or filled you with the Spirit or did something in your family for a child? Come on. Oh, y'all lift your hand up high, right? How, how many of y'all think he's worthy of thanks and glorification and praise because he saved you and healed you and filled you with the Spirit, did something in your, in your family? How many think it's worth the time to come back and say thanks? Jesus stopped and he, he's doing the math. He's like, wait a minute. Didn't, didn't I just send 10 guys off to get healed of leprosy? It's like, we're about nine people short at this table for 10 right here. We're nine people short. And he said, where's everybody else? And he looks down at the one that came back. He said, the only one of you that came back is from Samaria. He's making a point. All of the people that were supposed to be righteous... They didn't come back. But the unrighteous Samaritan came back and glorified me. You know, sometimes I've learned the, this lesson. It's a hard lesson. But often the unrighteous will behave more righteous than the righteous. How many of y'all been in a situation like that? where the unrighteous behave more righteous than the righteous. So this one guy comes and he gives him thanks and he's a Samaritan. And Jesus looks down at him and said, there were 10 of you I cleansed, you're the only one that came back. He says, it's your day. And he looks at him and he says, your faith has made you whole. Everybody say whole. Come on, say it again, whole. So the other guy in the original language, he gets healed. But whenever Jesus is talking to this guy, it's a different word. It's not healed, it's whole. Totally restored. All right, scholars tell me that it might have been such, a, such an unbelievable thing. You know, you had leprosy, stuff falls off of you, rots off of you. You're like walking and rotting. Digits come off, fingers, toes, pieces of flesh. These other guys got healed. Maybe the leprosy stopped, but there was still some missing stuff. But this man didn't just get healed and the leprosy stopped. He was made whole. Scholars suggest to me fingers start growing back out. Toes start growing back out. Wholeness comes to him. How many of you don't just want to be healed? Come on, you want your lost stuff back and everything that God has for you. You want a wholeness in your life. I don't just want a miracle. I want the blessing. I don't just want a healing. I want the wholeness. Come on, somebody. What's the difference between the healing and the wholeness? It's the attitude of gratitude. It's the giving of thanks. And on this Thanksgiving weekend, nothing makes more sense to me than for us to come back, church, and to give him thanks. Come on, if you believe it at every campus, give God a hand clap. Give God the highest praise. Come on, we're not just going to be healed. We're not just... We're not just going to be healed... We're going to be whole. I think I've broken the mic here. Praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and tell them we're not just going to be healed. We're going to be whole. See, what, I, what I'm thankful for, what I'm thankful for seems to grow in my life. What I stop being thankful for seems to leave my life. 
what I'm thankful for seems to grow in my life. What I'm not thankful for seems to leave my life. It's the way it is. It's the nature of gratitude. It's why, why marriages fall apart. It's why business partnerships fall apart. It's why people go separate ways, right? Everybody takes things for granted. And, and life's like this. Whatever you feed will feed you back. What you sow, you also reap. Give and it'll be given unto you, right? Whatever you feed will feed you. Like, like why did farmers used to have 15 children? Because they were going to work them in the future. They fed them when they're kids, right? So they grow up, they go to work on the farm. Anybody raised on a farm out there at any campus? Let me see you. Yeah, you know what it's like to be like an indentured servant then. And so you get to a certain age. You fed those kids, now they feed you back. They go to work. Same way with Thanksgiving. Our God's given us everything. Now we give back to him. He gives back to us. We give back to him thanks. I got a, I got a dog, a black fuzzy dog named Pirate. I've been feeding him, I don't know, six years. His birthday was Thanksgiving. I think he's six years old, something like that. And I love him. He's my, he's my running mate. And um, I love dogs. And I'm, I'm for dogs. I believe dogs are a gift from God. Man's best friend. I believe that cats are of the devil. All of them are demonized. Witches have cats, right? I love picking on the cat people. So how many of you have dogs and cats? Light and darkness have no place together, right? You got to pick a God and serve him. <laughs> so, no, nah, I really love cats. You'll never know if I do or not. But my dog, I've been feeding him for years, Pirate. And I show up, man, Pirate's the first person at the door. He's wagging his tail. He's loving me. He's happy. He wants to hang out. He would play. He's a ballaholic. I got him in a 12-step program. He would play ball until he ran his little nubs off, his paws off, right? And I'll never forget, I was, I was traveling, driving in the minivan. We had a minivan, and, and um, all the kids are in the car. How many of you used to think you were too cool for a minivan? Now you're like, that's the most rad minivan I've ever seen in my life. I could rock that minivan, amen? Need some spinners on it, tint the windows dark, fuzzy dice. Huh? Some LED action somewhere. So I'm in the minivan, I roll up, it's like two in the morning, this gas station, I'm falling asleep, can't stay awake. I pull over to the side, I'm gonna get out and stretch my legs. Pirates asleep in the, in the floorboard. This dog's a water dog. So these things were bred to help fishermen on boats. It's in their nature if something's moving to be very still so they don't scare the fish away. You can drive 20 hours, the dog will never move in the car, promise you. It goes almost like into hibernation mode. And um, all of a sudden this dog comes, I pull up and this dog comes from, from totally hibernation mode to he jumps over my shoulder and hits the window, barking and growling and in fight mode as hard as he can. I'm like, holy moly, what's happening? He's rah, rah, rah. you know, he's, he's all over the window. And I look, I didn't see him, but Pirate already saw him. But a crackhead was sneaking up on me from the left side. Now, I know I'm not supposed to say crackhead, but I used to be one so I can get away with it, right? I'm talking, I used to be one. Jesus set me free from all that. And they're creeping up on me, and pirate goes into protection mode. Why does he go into protection mode? Because I what? He's going to feed now what's been feeding him all his life. It's that cycle. It's gratitude. Thank you for feeding me. Thank you for taking care of me. Now I'm going to take care of you. Now I'm talking about a relationship between a man and a, and a dog here right? And the crackhead's still asking for money, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm in the Dave Ramsey program, and my crackhead envelope is envy, empty. I already, I already spent, I got crackheads in my own family. If I want to take care of a crackhead, I'll take care of mine, all right? And so, so they went on. The whole idea is this. I'd given to pirate, so pirate gives to me. How much more do we have a perfect God who's given us salvation? Who's fed us, church? Who's clothed us? Who put breath in our lungs, blood in our veins, caused our heart to pump this morning? Come on, saved us of our sins. Healed us when we didn't know if we were going to make it. Brought that wayward grandchild back. How much more that God that's given to us should we come back, fall down, and give him thanks? I want to live my life like that Samaritan. I want to have an attitude of gratitude 
Come on, I want to be thankful. Would you stand up on your feet? Come on, let's give him the highest praise this morning. Let's thank him. Thank him. Come on. I think it's appropriate on this Thanksgiving weekend. Come on, just tell him, thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've been too good. Now just lift a hand to heaven right where you are at every campus. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for a fresh revelation, the attitude of gratitude. Let it flow into our lives. Let us not be so focused on what we don't have that we miss what we do have. Lord, I thank you that we're not just going to live healed, Lord, but we're going to live whole. I speak wholeness over your family. I speak wholeness over your life. I speak wholeness over, over your children, your grandchildren. Wholeness over that body. Come on, I say be strong in your body from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. I declare health and strength. Lord, I thank you for household salvation. I, I thank you that not one of our family members is going to go to hell, but all of them are going to be born again. I thank you for revival. We say that we are made whole. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. And the church said, amen, 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 amen. Hey, why don't you welcome your campus pastors and hosts. We love you. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. Stay out of trouble, huh?